Welcome to Around BCC. I'm Keith Thibault. Last month, we took the show on the road and we showed you the great work that's being done by the staff and students at our new Bedford campus. Well, that went so well that we decided to keep the show on the road again this month. This month, we are at the Attleboro Center, and it is arguably the fastest growing sector of the BCC campuses uh, and the, the, the service area that Bristol Community College serves. We're going to be talking to a lot of people here on campus. We're going to start with the Dean of BCC at Attleboro, Kathy Torpy Garganta. Kathy, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Keith. It's great to be back. And it's great for us to be back here in Attleboro. We told, uh, I told Terry in New Bedford, I said, you know, we don't come out here too much. It's, it's, it's a bad thing. But we're here today, so we're going to talk about some of the great things happening here in, in Attleboro. Well, we have many exciting things happening, uh, along with the fact that we've now grown in five years to 1,200 students from just having a very small program at Attleboro High School to being a very large, vibrant uh, campus. And uh, we're really excited about that. Our programs have expanded so much and we're growing so fast that we've had to now offer classes at 8 a.m. in the morning, so we wake everybody up and we've had to run classes on Saturday. So we also expect another large growth in this September. Now BCC had a presence in Attleboro through the years. Um, I believe it was at the high school, at yes. Attleboro High School. Correct. And then uh, the, the Attleboro Center was opened on County Street, the old high school. And then this facility, this beautiful facility, was opened last academic year, 2008, fall of 2008, if that's correct. How has all that impacted um, you know the growth here at Attleboro? I think it's had a, a tremendous uh, effect because you can't bring 1,200 individuals onto a campus and while that's 1,200 students they're all taking multiple classes so we're really up to 3,500 uh, moments in time that students are on this campus taking a class interacting whether it's uh, stopping for uh, refreshments, uh, Dunkin' Donuts, getting gas, uh, going to the drug stores. We have great uh, offerings on 123 that we know our students are, are really helping with a little bit of an economic boom. And anytime you bring in a college campus, its energy helps to make the city and the surrounding cities and towns thrive. So we've been very fortunate, and I, I, we have to credit that to our president, Jack Sprague, who had the vision to take the risk when there were naysayers, and, and we went ahead and our foundation, our BCC foundation, supported that. And that's why we're here today, and we're still exploding. Right. We're, uh, the, the, the new facility, if you will, is in the old Texas uh, Instruments complex in, in Attleboro. Um, it's funny, in, in speaking with Terry Romanovich in New Bedford, um, there in downtown New Bedford, and from the moment they were in that space, it was too small. Correct. It, it, is that the potential here as well? Oh, we already are outgrown our space. That's why we had to expand our day right. uh, and uh, offering many more things. But because of the growth, we're also able to offer more uh, opportunities for the students. Mm -hmm. So we are having, for instance, this afternoon, we're having a panel of women from throughout the community come to talk to our students because it's Women's Month. And on Friday night, we're having a ca our first cafe night for the students where a student musical group and a couple of the faculty members are going to be playing during the evening and we'll have our first social event. And the YMCA, our students play basketball there. We're starting to have the boxing fitness club Ha working out there. So because we have a now a student body that's large enough, we can offer more opportunities for the students. Expound upon that a little bit, how important it is to have not just classes here, but some extracurricular activities to, to, to build a more rounded student here and, at Attleboro. Well, basically that's the answer. You're trying to build someone who's got this awareness because the idea in college is can we teach you to read, write, think, make decisions and be socially well-rounded and this provides an opportunity for the students to have a true college experience. Now you're also the Dean of the activities that happen in Taunton and, and there have been BCC offerings in Taunton for many years and, and before we talk I said you know we don't talk about Taunton enough. Well, I, Taunton. <laughs> well I'm excited about Taunton. I just took over Taunton less than a year ago uh, last uh, April or May 
and it is growing. I'm very proud to say it grew 158%, but we started off with a very small base, and now we have um, just under 200 students who are taking classes. In the fall, we are going to start classes now at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on two days a week, and we're going to expand to four evenings. So we've been very um, excited about having a presence in the Taunton community. They have been very open to them, very uh, much uh, engaging BCC to come and, and do more, and uh, Senator uh, Pacheco has been very much involved along with uh, Representative Fagan and Superintendent Hackett, all of them, just like we were here with the superintendent, with the mayor, with all of our legislators, they've just been fabulous mm -hmm. in embracing BCC. Yesterday we had a job fair here that we partnered with the Chamber of Commerce and we had over 200 people in, in a very few hours come and that's people coming on to the campus. Hopefully some of them will decide that they want to come come to um, this location and we hope to do more of that in Taunton, be able to have a, a much larger presence just like we do in Attleboro and New Bedford. Well there have been a lot of people who have made BCC at Attleboro a success and with your leadership you're definitely thank one you. of those people and thank you for joining us today. You're and very welcome, thank forward. you for coming. We'll have more of Around BCC right after this. Welcome back. As is the case at the New Bedford campus, here in Attleboro, students don't really need to go anywhere else to begin and complete their education at Bristol Community College. We're joined now by Peter Glass. He's an academic advisor here at BCC at Attleboro. Peter, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for the chance. Now, one of your roles here is to help students uh, register for classes here, get them involved at BCC in Attleboro. And, and like the Fall River campus and the New Bedford campus, Students really don't have to go anywhere else to get started. Is that correct? Yes, that's true. Um, walk me a little bit through, um, if I'm a prospective student, um, how I could find out the courses here at BCC Attleboro and how you can get me registered and, and, and get going to my educational future. Well, there's a couple of different kinds of students that come here. Let's suppose you're coming right out of high school. Mm -hmm. A lot of times those students may come with a parent. They walk in the door and sit down and just don't know what to do. Right. So when you start with the whole process, we show them what's available both in our catalog and available online. And our online website is really good. So they can go right there. We show them how to go to the areas that help learn about the college. They can go right there, pull up an application. They can apply online. When they apply online, they fill out that form, um, hit send, and here it comes. Then they need a high school transcript with that. All of that information goes to Fall River, and the process begins. Mm -hmm. Um, at that same time, we can register them for a placement test. Right. And it's not an admissions test, it's a placement test, and that's a big difference. So with the placement test, we sign them up. It takes about two and a half hours to take a placement test. And students are tested in both English and math. And after the placement test, the scores come out um, of our computer, and students meet with our advisors. There are about five of us here that are academic advisors. They meet with the advisors, the advisors go over the test results, explain what they mean, and can help register students for classes and put them in where they need. So if they test low in an area, they can take a remedial class. If they test um, where they need be to start a college course, they can start right there. Mm -hmm. And then at that process, or a little earlier with an advisor, we can talk about majors and programs and how that works. Right. And one of the roles you also play here at the, at the uh, Attleboro Center is also speaking with students who may want to transfer after their BCC years. Um, how important is that process and, and you know, how do you deal with students in terms of taking the next step after their BCC career? That's a real important process. Um, some of the students that come here know exactly where they want to go at some point. They know that they're coming here for a year or they're coming here to finish an associate's degree and then they want to go off to a very specific school. So one of the things that the college needs to make sure, you need to make sure that you're putting the students in the right courses that are going to be accepted at the other college. So along the, along the way, specific notes are kept on the students. We track the majors very carefully. And we make sure that if they're majoring in a specific area here, it's going to go where they need. And that's a real important thing because you don't want to take courses just to take courses. Right. One of the great things about uh, the New Bedford and Attleboro uh, campuses 
is the fact that there are a number of, of degree programs where students don't have to go to Fall River or any other campus. They can take them here. You deal with a lot of students coming in to BCC. Um, how much of a factor, a comfort factor for students knowing that, boy, I, I live in Greater Attleboro, I can just come in my backyard, get a degree, and hopefully, you know, advance from there? For a lot of students and parents, that's a really important consideration. Um, some students will even switch or change a major mm -hmm. because if I have to go to Fall River, I can't get there or it doesn't fit into my schedule or I don't want to do that or I don't have the transportation to do that. So some students are very carefully looking at the majors that they take and the programs that they do and being able to complete something right here becomes really important to a lot of people. Well, Peter, I appreciate your time and continue to, the great work you do here at BCC Attleboro. Thank you. We'll have more from BCC at Attleboro right after this. Welcome back to our special edition of Around BCC as we take a look at the people and students at the Attleboro Center. And I'm joined by one of those students right now. He's Bryce Lipscomb. And Bryce, thank you for joining me today. You're welcome. Now, now Bryce, we, we were talking before we started taping about your situation. You you grew up in North Attleboro, went to North Attleboro High School, and what was, what was your thinking um, in terms of your educational future after high school? What did you want to do? Uh, I wanted to be a lawyer, and uh, I had, honestly, I, I had aspirations to become a, a politician. Okay. So what were you looking at in terms of schools right after high school, and what did you do? Um, I was looking, honestly, I looked out of the state. I wanted to get out of the state for a little while and see what there was out there. Um, I applied to four colleges and um, got accepted to all of them, Central Michigan, Eastern, Northern Michigan, and Thomas College in Maine. Okay. And you ended up going to Central Michigan yes. for a while. And then you, for, for some reason, you changed your mind and, and came back. What, what was the reasoning behind that? Um, it, it is it's kind of expensive, okay. and they were not going to give me in-state tuition, as promised. So, you know, instead of taking out all the loans, my mom thought it would be a best, uh, better idea, why not come here, save some money, and get your just associate's degree at BCC. Before you came to BCC, what did you know about it? What were some of your, you know, pre maybe preconceived notions about community college? I hadn't actually honestly ever heard of BCC before, except for like a Fall River campus. I had no idea that they had an Adel Royal campus. Uh -huh. And I was completely against the community uh, college system. You know, I'm thinking, I came from a huge university. This is going to be a complete waste of my time. This is high school drama. You know, why am I here? Why am I doing this? You know, and I was pleasantly surprised. And I actually went to the dean and had to, you know, apologize to her for, you know, that misconception that this was just a lower grade of schooling, and it's not. Mm -hmm. Now, you're a psychology major here at BCC, um, and you're one of the many students here in Attleboro, in the Attleboro area, you take all your classes here. Yes, it is. And you hope to get your degree entirely from taking classes here in Attleboro. How important is that for you to stay close to home and take all your classes here locally? Well, um, it just works out because, you know, like I have, I work in that North Attleboro and I also live in North Attleboro. So driving, you know, 45 minutes to Fall River is kind of out of the way, especially if you have an early class. Nobody wants to get up at five o'clock in the morning to, you know, go to a, a three, you know, an eight o'clock class. Uh, but here, it's just, it's so convenient. It takes 10 minutes to get here. And when you get here, it's just a wonderful school system. You know, it's open for you. It's ready. You've got your paper. You can sit down before class, read, and then you just get into the thing. And what's important is being a psychology major, you talked about going to Central Michigan. Yes. You're going to return there yes, after, after you're done. So that's a good success story for Central Michigan University. You'll, they'll, they'll get Bryce Lipscomb back um, for his uh, bachelor's degree and beyond. Yes. Bryce, thank you for joining me today. You're, you're very welcome. Best. Thank you very much. We'll be back right after this. Joined now by another student who uses the BCC at Attleboro as her stop for her educational future. I'm joined now by Erin Sheldoni. And Erin, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Um, you're from this area, Mansfield. Now you live in North Attleboro, as I understand it. Yes. Um, what interested you about BCC and why did you choose BCC? Well, actually, um, I graduated from high school in 2002. Okay. Um, I do have a son. Um, I originally, I was working full time and then I decided to leave there and it was really hard to find work and I decided it was time to better our life. 
Um, so I decided to get some information at BCC when we were at the old campus and um, everybody was very friendly and I decided to come full time as a student. Now what was, uh, what's, your, what's your major and why are you interested in that major? Um, I originally came in as a human services major uh -huh. and it just seemed not the right career choice for me so I decided to get into criminal justice. I've always had a passion for you know the law and I took some classes in high school and um, I love it now and I'm glad I made it that choice so. You, want, you are one of what, uh, what those in academia call a non-traditional student in that you're not coming right out of high school into, into college. You actually, you know, you said you have, you have a child yes. and, and you're coming back to school after a certain number of years. Um, how's that transition been coming back to school? And talk a little bit about the challenges of going to school, having a family, and meeting all those needs. Um, it was very hard at first. Um, when I came in, you know, I thought it would, it, I thought it was going to be hard to be full time, especially that I do take care of my son on my own. Um, but after talking with the staff, and you know, they really had a good plan for me. They were very nice. They, op they just opened a million doors for me, and it, it's hard, but I get through it, and I work really hard. And I, I am a work study here as well. I do work in the office part time, so it is struggle. It is a struggle to balance everything, but it is definitely worth it and I am keeping my grades up so I'm doing something right. <laughs> and also how important is it, and, I, and we just spoke to, to Bryce, another student, how important is it for you to be able to take all your classes right here in Attleboro close to home? Oh it's extremely important um, especially with having you know needing to be there for my son if I ever need to leave and go get him but um, gas is expensive now and Fall River is a long drive so it's really nice that I chose a program that I can complete in Attleboro. And we do have a few programs here, so that can be completed here. Have you also been able to speak about BCC to some of your other friends who maybe, again, maybe not going to college right away to say, hey, let's start at BCC first. It's right in Attleboro. It's right here. Get started. Yes, I actually, I have two other friends that have children as well, and I talked them into coming here, and again, they haven't been in school for a while, so they didn't think they could do it either, especially because you know, when you're in high school, the work seems so hard, and then right. when you take a long break, it is hard to get back into wanting to write your papers and right. things. But I've actually gotten two other people to come in here, so it's just been great. What's your hope after BCC? Um, I'd like to further and go get my BA eventually, probably trim it down to part-time so that I can work full-time, but mm -hmm. that's my next goal. Um, I would love to be a judge someday, although that's a lot of work. So right now, maybe probation. I'd like to get into a probation officer, parole officer, something like that. Well, Erin, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Time now for the latest edition of Alumni in Your Community. Today, we talk to an Attleboro man who has used his position as a firefighter to come back to BCC to improve his education. Hi, my name is Paul Hogan, BCC class of 2009. born in Biloxi, Mississippi. My father was in the Air Force, so I was a military brat, and uh, my family moved around the United States quite a bit. In about fourth grade, we settled here. Um, my, both my parents are from the area. We settled in Norwood, and I graduated from Norwood High School in 1993. While in high school, I had a lot of career interests in uh, law enforcement, and also some in the fire service. So I definitely had a public safety oriented future, you could say. After high school, I went to uh, Northeastern University, and then after that I went to UMass Boston. Both years I majored in criminal justice. And then shortly after that, I started working as a uh, dispatcher for AMR. It's a private ambulance company. I worked there for about a year and a half. I dispatched a large area, the Norfolk County area, the whole state of Rhode Island, um, and covered some of the other areas as well. And then after that, I had a position with the town of Westwood dispatching a police, fire, and ambulance for that department. I've been with the Norwood Fire Department since May of 2003. Um, I'm also a, uh, an EMT, which is emergency medical technician. Uh, we do split shifts. We do currently two weeks on the ambulance, two weeks on an engine or a ladder company. Uh, we you know, respond to fires, alarms, uh, car accidents, transport sick people, injured people to the hospital. I was interested in going back to school 
I wanted to have some type of uh, professional standard or backing to whatever I was getting myself into. I'd been on the fire department as a firefighter for a year, and uh, the uh, Attleboro firefighters put a, uh, some information on the state union website regarding fire science classes. I thought it'd be a good idea to check it out and see if it would help me towards taking a promotional exam. They're going to use the same textbooks and, and teach the materials. I found that to be a lot easier for myself. So I went and I found out about it. And uh, the staff, uh, Chief Ravad, who was the uh, Chief of Somerset, but he's also the head of the Fire Science uh, degree program at BCC. He gave me a lot of good information and uh, was very helpful. So I started in uh, the end of 2004. It was tough getting back into school just to get in that rhythm of going to class, having assignments due at a certain time. But the instructors are very good at a lot of them, especially for the fire service classes, who are on the job themselves, either chiefs or officers, such as lieutenants or captains, teaching the classes. Um, you know, so they could relate to where you're coming from, whereas a math teacher or an English teacher might not understand that uh, quite as well. The 24-hour shifts that we work, the rotating schedule, the weekends, the holidays. Um, but they're very uh, good at accommodating people or, or you know, maybe changing a day to, that might work better for other students. What I got out of the classes at BCC, um, aside from the education, was talking to other people that are in the field that are already in the fire service. Usually the first 10 to 15 minutes we talk about what happened during the week at everybody's job. Somebody might have a hazmat incident. Somebody had a billing fire. You know, and you learn things from other guys, especially guys who've been on the job longer. So we share that around the classroom. And even for some of the, the younger students who might not be on the job that are aspiring to be firefighters or paramedics or EMTs, you know, they were learning things as well. And they, they had things to bring to the table as well. A huge portion of the classes I took were at the Attleboro campus. Um, initially, I was residing in Walpole, but still wasn't a, a, a bad commute. It was very easy to get to right down 95, uh, probably about 25 minutes from Walpole. And shortly after that, my wife and I purchased a home in Attleboro. So the class commute was, you know, five to ten minutes. So it really worked out quite well. I have a, a family. I have my wife, Christine. We've been married since 2002. Uh, we have two boys, uh, Jackson, who's four and Gavin, who's uh, two. Um, you know, we have a nice home in Attleboro and we play out in the backyard a lot and we have a swing set. And I enjoy being a dad and a husband. I love the job, it's, it's a good job. Uh, firefighting gets to expose you to the public. You get to help people when they're having their worst day. You know, and uh, when, when there's nobody else to call, they call us. So there's a lot of excitement, uh, and there's you know times that we're waiting around, waiting for something to happen. Uh, so you get that that sudden change from nothing going on, you know, maybe studying for a lieutenant's exam, or reading a fire magazine, uh, to possibly being inside a house trying to find the seat of a fire, or venting the roof or looking for victims inside. Here are some other news and notes now from around BCC. In this tough economic climate, Bristol Community College has been able to share some good news with students, faculty, and staff as it prepares for the upcoming academic year. The first comes in the form of increased funding from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thanks to an infusion of federal stimulus funds in the amount of $3.6 million, the BCC Board of Trustees voted unanimously not to increase fees for students for the 2010-2011 academic year. BCC President Dr. John Sprager also pledged for the third year in a row that no employee layoffs will take place. The news was announced during the visit to the Fall River campus by Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick. President Sprager said the moves could not have been made without the governor's commitment to education and the community college mission.
It is often said in these times of economic uncertainty that uh, the one thing you do not want to do is uh, balance the budget or try to come out of uh, the uncertainty on the backs of students. And we are making a strong statement now. Uh, Bristol stands uh, seventh or eighth in terms of the uh, most expensive schools of the 15. And uh, that's a list I would want to be on the bottom of. That's one of the only ones. But I would, And I think that we're, with this statement today, that we are headed downward, which is the way we want to go. We want to be um, as affordable as possible uh, because that's what we're all about, access and opportunity to quality education. Governor Patrick called BCC's announcement good news in the face of the state still trying to recover from the worst economic recession of our lifetime. There isn't a single family or business large and small, government large and small that hasn't been touched by this downturn. And it has done a number on people's incomes, their savings, their home equity. It's also done a number on people's heads, if you know what I'm talking about. People are nervous, worried about the future. And I hope what you see from this budget and this announcement is that we, all of us, are doing everything we can to invest in the future that is you here at this community college and education really all across the Commonwealth. You are the future. And as long as we can do what we can to help you do what you do, to give young people and old alike a reason to look up and look forward, then I am quite confident in that future. In terms of total student fees and tuition, BCC ranks in the middle of the pack of the 15 community colleges in Massachusetts. The other piece of good news coming out of Bristol Community College last month is the announcement that BCC, through a public-private partnership, will be able to provide increased opportunities for those entering the healthcare field. BCC announced that it's partnering with the prestigious Princeton Review in a public-private investment in facilities, materials, and online curriculum development as a vehicle to add upwards of 1,000 students to the college's health services programs. The expansion will be housed at BCC's New Bedford campus and play a leading role in filling the hundreds of healthcare employment opportunities on the South Coast. President Sprague said in the nursing program alone, 1,000 students annually compete for 72 slots. He says this partnership will help satisfy the college's goal of expanding its services to meet the educational needs of more students. To build capacity in these key areas is uh, just a significant breakthrough for New Bedford. We're also going to be moving forward, I think, uh, this is going to be so successful that we're going to move on to other uh, critical areas outside the health field as well, once we get take care of a number of the health programs that we have, because it is, as I say, it is the wave of the future and it is what we're going to be able, uh, able to do for the city of, uh, of New Bedford. New Bedford State Senator Mark Montigny, in conjunction with others in the local area legislative delegation, helped BCC navigate through the bureaucratic red tape to make this partnership a reality. He says, along with adding foot traffic to New Bedford's downtown, this partnership will help ease the burden of South Coast patients seeking quality health care. BCC is not training um, surgeons here, but BCC is training the whole support network of people that have more direct care responsibility than the best doctors in the nation. And I think in the end that helps fulfill this promise that we began 10 years ago and, and hopefully someday uh, we won't just talk about educating uh, folks. We'll be saying that every kid uh, has, uh, in fact, universal health care, every adult has health care, and that the um, direct care workers are there to serve when needed, not you know, two months after the disease has gone from preventable to, uh, to uh, acute. Uh, and then Enrollment in these expanded health care opportunities begin this fall. That'll do it for this edition of Around BCC. We leave you today with a look at the art exhibit Linear, held at the Grimshaw Goodowitz Art Gallery at the Fall River Campus last month. I'm Keith Tebow. Thanks for watching.